Welcome to the Altera eLearning, implementing the triple speed Ethernet FPGA IP. By the end of this training, you will be able to configure the triple speed Ethernet or TSE IP according to your design needs. You will also be able to generate a design example to demonstrate the functioning IP. This training assumes that you have a basic understanding of the Ethernet protocol. We will not have time to define the Ethernet frame, layers, or interfaces. The training also assumes that you have some familiarity with FPGAs, particularly their basic structure, and an understanding of the FPGA development process and tools. We also will assume you have reviewed the TSE IP introductory training, or that you have some understanding of the IP features. We will begin with a section on how you can parameterize the IP, then we will review the available design examples and how you can create one. Let's begin with TSE IP parameterization. The TSE IP parameter editor is the tool within the Cordis software that lets you customize an instance for your design using the configurable options available with the IP. The parameter editor is found in the IP catalog in both the Cordis Prime Pro software and Platform Designer. You can find it in the Interface Protocols folder and then under Ethernet. Double click on the IP name to open the parameter editor. Like many Altera IPs, the parameter editor has tabs at the top that collect IP settings into related groups or options. Note that the tabs can vary for different device families. If you do not see a particular tab shown in this training in your TSE parameter editor, it simply means that your device does not offer the configurable options found on that tab. In the lower right, you will find the preset section. Presets are pre-configured IP implementations. Some are based on application solutions, but many are based on target development kits. Presets are a quick way to select a collection of valid settings for that IP. From there, you can adjust the settings according to your IP needs. Otherwise, you can manually go through each tab, choosing your options and using the system messages window at the bottom to determine if you are violating any of the IP rules. The IP will not generate if there are errors displayed in the system messages window at the bottom. Starting on the core configurations tab, you will find the core variations drop down menu where you can choose to implement one of the variations described in the TSE intro training. This includes the Mac only, the Mac and PCS, and the PCS only configurations. This list also includes the options for the small Mac. Looking at the remaining options on this tab, you can select the Mac to PCS interface type. For most devices in core variations, the interface type is fixed. Below that, you can choose to enable or disable the internal FIFOs. Disabling them means you can implement a multiport TSE IP. If you disable the internal FIFOs, use the drop-down to select the number of ports in multiples of four. If you have enabled the PCS, the drop-down menu at the bottom lets you choose to implement the PMA in embedded transceivers or using LVDSIO. The drop-down menu will only show you the PMA options available for your target device and your configuration of the IP. On the Mac Options tab, you can enable or disable hardware-related options for the Mac. By enabling these options, the hardware resources to support these options are added to the core. You can then control the added logic by means of configuration registers. By disabling any options you don't need, you can reduce the size of your IP. Looking at the options on this page, you can enable or disable Mac Loopback Support, Supplemental Mac Unicast Addresses to support fast address filtering, Statistics counters to monitor traffic using the statistics registers. A multicast hash table to quickly detect and filter multicast packets. VLAN support and magic packet support. At the very bottom is the option to control an external FI through an MDIO module. The next tab is the FIFO options tab. On this tab, you select the width of the FIFO interface to the FPGA fabric, either 8 or 32 bits. Then you choose the depth of the receive and transmit FIFOs the trade-offs being resource usage versus core throughput. Of course, these options are enabled only if the internal FIFO option is enabled. On the Timestamp Options tab, you can enable timestamping the PTP one-step clock and the timestamp fingerprint width. For select devices that support deterministic latency, there is an option to enable that as well. Note that these options will be grayed out unless you are using a core and device that supports IEEE 1588 and if other compatible IP settings are enabled. On the PCS and Transceiver Options tab, at the top, you can enable the SGMI adapter logic to support all three Ethernet core speeds, 10, 100, and 1 gig. If you only require gigabit Ethernet, then turning this off will reduce the size of the core. The remaining options on the tab are specific to the target device family.
Different FPGA families have different transceivers, so the logic necessary to configure, change, and monitor the transceivers varies. Again, your tab may look different depending on which device you target. This screen capture shows options for ARIA 10 and Cyclone 10 FPGAs, as well as E-tiles and F-tiles. These options involve setting up dynamic reconfiguration logic so that gigabit transceivers can be calibrated and modified on the fly. Your version may show options for only one family, or there may be no options at all if the controller is not required. Once you have completed setting the parameters for your instance, then generate the IP, instantiate it in your design, and compile. This is the same flow used in all Altera AP. If you are unaware, the Show Instantiation Template option in the Generate menu gives you an instantiation template you can copy and paste into your source files. If you need to modify your settings, just reopen the .ap file created by the Parameter Editor, which stores your settings. Note that if you are building the system using the Platform Designer tool, then the TSE IP user interface is the same, but once you finish customizing, you connect the IP within the Platform Designer tool, instead of manually instantiating. You also do not need to generate the IP file as a separate step, as it will be generated along with the rest of the Platform Designer system. Now that you have learned to configure your IP, let's look at the design examples. If you want a pre-built solution, implementing the TSE IP that you can quickly run in hardware or simulation, generate one of the many TSE design examples. The TSE IP design examples are a great way to see your IP incorporated into a design application, both to see how it gets connected and to better understand how it functions. The design examples can be used to demonstrate the compile flow so that you can review the IP in various Cordis reports and displays. They can be programmed into a development kit to perform hardware tests. They can be simulated in common FPGA simulation tools. Each design example comes with a detailed user guide, linked on this slide, that includes step-by-step -step instructions on how to generate them. This includes selecting the correct FPGA variation and any key IP settings required for their operation. If you want to go to hardware, the instructions will also tell you which development kit is targeted by the design example. Choosing the development kit means the part number and pin-related assignments will be pre-selected for that board. Otherwise, you can still generate the design example without any specific hardware settings. Use the IP presets to quickly configure the IP parameters with the values matching the design examples. The features of the design examples vary according to the FPGA family. However, each design generally contains a fully implemented TSE IP with Mac and PCS. The Mac may be single port of multiport, and for the PMA, it may use embedded gigabit transceivers or LVDSIO. Each design example includes a traffic generator connected to the transmit side and a checker connected to the receive side, which validates the data coming back into the IP from over an external loopback. Packet statistics are reported into both transmit and receive MAC registers for access through the IP CSI. The design also includes a JTAG to Avalon bridge. This bridge allows you to access the register space over JTAG using the System Console debugging tool in the Cordis software. The System Console provides an API that you use to compose script files that can dynamically read from and write to the IP registers. You can even create your own interactive display. Altera has done this with a tool we call the Ethernet Toolkit. If you are interested in learning more about the Ethernet Toolkit, there are links available on the resources slide later in this presentation. Here are two block diagrams of design examples. We have the Agilex 5 FPGA design example on the left and the Agilex 7 example on the right. Both use internal FIFOs, but because the PMAs are different, the additional design logic in FPGA fabric varies. The Agilex 5 example uses embedded transceivers for the PMA. The Agilex 7 example uses LVDSIO. Note there is a separate design example for Agilex 7F tiled devices, which uses embedded transceivers. To create the design example, in the parameter editor, go to the last tab, the example design tab. In the first drop down menu, select the example design you want generated. For some FPGA families, Based on the device you select in your Cordis project, there will be only one choice. Select if you want a design for synthesis only, simulation only, or both. Select the target design language, either Verilog or BHDL. Then select the development kit. Again, choosing a development kit means that the design example will be generated with the right target device, device pins, and any necessary hardware constraints set for you. If you select none, you will still get the design but you must manually assign pins and set any constraints. 
Click the Example Design button at the top to generate the hardware project, which would include files for simulation, if you enable the option below. Click the Example Design Testbench button at the top, if you only want the functional simulation model and its corresponding testbench. To run the design example in hardware or in simulation, you should follow the instructions in the design example user guide for that particular design example. The instructions can vary depending on your device family and which design example you select. For simulation in general, the design examples are generated with script files that are placed in a directory of your choosing. Locate and run the script file. For hardware, the design examples are generated with a Quartus project. Open the project in Quartus and compile. This will generate the configuration file to load into the FPGA. Some example designs will provide additional scripts to run or tools to use after the device is programmed. This concludes our look at implementing the TSE FPGA IP. As you learned in this training, use the triple speed Ethernet FPGA IP parameter editor to quickly configure your TSE IP to suit your design requirements, then generate TSE IP design examples to perform hardware tests and simulations. With that, you will learn how to connect the IP to real design and can verify how it functions. Finally, here are links again to the IP and design example user guides quoted throughout this presentation along with links to some additional TSE documentation that might be useful to you. The Altera training team is always looking to improve our material. To do this, a survey will be emailed to your registration email address. We welcome any feedback you may have. Thank you again for viewing this training. Have a good